Hmm. I wish there was some way for me to get my application to display in the language of my users. Oh wait, there is. You want to find out how? Well, you know what to do. Stick around. Hey friends, I'm Mark from the Angular team and I am thrilled to be back with another crisp new video. Together, we'll learn about internationalization in Angular and internationalize an application. This is going to be great. Let's go over some terms before writing any code so that way we're all on the same page. If you're already familiar with internationalization, you can skip ahead to the next chapter. When talking about making your app available in different languages, you may hear the term to internationalization and localization. Although these terms are related, they are not the same. Let me explain. Internationalization, or often abbreviated as I18N, is the process of preparing and designing your app to support its use in different languages and language dialects. This could include enabling your application to support rendering in different languages by separating the content that will then be translated. Also, the preparation could include updating your app to support bi-directional text, that is, left to right or right to left. Once you prepare your app, the next step is to localize the application. Localization is the process of building versions of your project for your different locales. Wait, so what's a locale? A locale identifies a region where people speak a language or language variant. For a given locale, there's specific formatting for measurements of time, numbers, and currency. There's also translations of names, including time zones, languages, and countries. Check out the description for more resources and helpful links containing information about locale settings. Locales take the format of language ID hyphen locale extension. For example, EN hyphen US for English in the United States or FR hyphen CA for French in Canada. Here are a few more things to consider. The internationalization process technically only needs to happen once, and then you can localize your application to as many locales as needed without changing your application code. If you expand your application, you'll need to ensure that those new pages have been internationalized. Now, teams may perform the localization process multiple times to support different locales. And depending on the target language, it may be revealed that the string sizes from one of the locales may disrupt the UI. This can happen with languages like German, for example. So be sure to review your UI. All right, great. With language covered, let's go over what we'll do together today. We'll install our dependencies to add support for localization and internationalization. We'll internationalize our application. Then we'll localize our application. Now, here's the application that we're going to localize. It represents an order confirmation page in an e-commerce app. All right, let's head over to the code. First, let's get those dependencies installed. We'll do that using the Angular localize package. From the command line in your project, type ng add at angular forward slash localize, and when asked if we want to proceed, reply yes. This package gives us the tools to localize our application. While we're getting our dependency sorted, we'll also update angular.json. First, we'll specify which locale we'll be supporting. In my example, I'm going to use Spanish. Under projects, our app name, I'm going to add the i18n property. Next, I will specify the source locale property, which is our locale used in the source code. So for this example, it'll be en hyphen us. Let's add another property called locales and specify which locales this application will support and where the translation file will be stored. That will be src forward slash locale forward slash messages dot es dot xlf. We haven't created this file yet, but that's coming up soon. Under architect, build, options, let's add another localized property and give it the value of an array with es-pr as the only element. This tells Angular which locale to build when it's time to localize the application. 
Also, please note that adding this property also allows us to preview a specific locale with ng serve. We can't preview multiple locales at the same time with ng serve. So adding multiple locales to the array or setting the property value to true will lead to an error when running our application with the dev server. All right, our app configuration is done. Great job. Up next, let's check out our application and look for OTIs. That's opportunities to internationalize. Okay, in our application, where can we find some OTIs? This application features quite a few streams that can be internationalized. Your order is on its way. Thank you for shopping with us and your order has been processed. The table headers, item, quantity, date, and amount. And finally, the total amount text. We can also internationalize the currency for total amount and the date value. Is there anything else? Now, this one can be easy to miss. If you said images, then I want you to get that handle right now because I have something for you. High five for me to you. That's right. The images will have alt text that needs to be translated into the language of our locale. Now that we know which things to internationalize, let's go to the code again. In app.component.html, let's start by updating the text parts of the application. We'll mark these as content that will be displayed in the selected locale by adding the i18n attribute. In our case, we'll use the basic form of the attribute, but developers can add more metadata details like customized IDs and context for translators too. Next, we'll use pipes for the date and currency marked for translation. The date pipe and currency pipe both support locale-specific formatting by default. We'll take advantage of the IATN attribute to mark the alt text attribute of the image for translation. The alt attribute isn't the only option here. We can mark other attributes for translations too. Before we move on to the next step, let's use dollar sign localize to mark the page title for translation in our component class, app.component.ts. And just like that, we've internationalized our application. Let's go! Now for the good part. We're going to use the extract i18n command with the Angular CLI to extract all of the elements that have been marked for translation. In the command prompt, type ng extract hyphen i18n and then specify where the translation file should live with the output path option. In this example, I'll add source forward slash locale, which matches the location from angular.json. In the locale folder we just created, we now have our messages file, which is great. But these messages are in the original language. Here's what to do next. We're gonna make a copy of this file for each of our supported locales. I'm gonna make a copy of this file named messages.es.xlf. This is using the locale ID that we specified in angular.json. At this point, we pass the locale files to the translator and then update our project with the updated files. But for this example though, we're gonna add the translations ourselves. So in messages.es.xlf, we find that each message from our project has a section. In that section, we find the ID for the translation and the original text under the source element. Our next step is to add a sibling element to the source element called target. The target represents the translated text for this locale. Let's make those updates now. Here's the moment of truth. Time to view our localized application. From the command line, we'll run ng-serve. Now, check our app in the browser, and there we have it. A fully internationalized and localized application. So exciting. ng-serve is just our dev server, but we can build and localize versions of our app with ng-build and pass the localized flag to build all of our locales or leave it off to build the locale specified in the build config in angular.json. I'm gonna use a local server to serve our build. Next, I'll go to localhost port 3004 slash ES for our Spanish locale. And here we have it. We can also go to en-us for the English locale and whatever other locale you configured for this example. Right now, we can see the changes in our local server. When it's time to deploy the application, 
we'll want to configure the server, the base href, and more to properly show the users their preferred language. The Angular documentation has some great information on how to set these up, and you can find links in the description below. One final thing to note, you may be wondering why we need a version of our web app for each locale. Why not follow patterns defined by other solutions? Well, these are some great questions. First thing to consider is that the translation step is done as a part of the post build process. So your build times aren't impacted by the localization step. Next, consider the performance cost of changing the language of your application in real time. To be able to change the language without reloading the page, each translation string will create a new binding. But most of the time, users will not be changing the language, so the values of these bindings will remain the same. Then, when change detection runs, it'll have to check all of the bindings even if you haven't changed anything. And additionally, each binding is an extra instruction which adds to the application bundle. To change the language during runtime requires shipping the translation library, which also increases your app size. Here's another consideration. Translation files aren't tree shakeable. Again, let me explain. An application can have thousands of translation strings for a given language. It's hard to know which translations will be used and which won't for a selected language. Applying the translations at runtimes means that we load all of the translation strings even if they aren't used in your application. Because Angular does build time localization, we'll only include the strings that are used in the app. Now, there's a cost to the Angular solution as well. You'll have to refresh the page in order to see the translations whenever your user chooses a new locale that your application supports. Now, every approach has its trade-offs. Angular's build time i18n is optimized for load and performance. We believe that users don't change the locale too frequently, so a page reload once is a reasonable trade-off. And friends, if you do need to load your translations at runtime, there's a way to do it using dollar sign localize, but this will only work once. If you're interested, I'm going to link to the docs down below. All right, friends, that does it for me. This has been a lot of fun, and I hope that you've enjoyed our time together today. This example project links to the official Angular Internationalization Guide and more are in the description of this video. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't. And until the next time, friends, go build great apps.